Hello everyone. This is the Bitcoin cycle analysis uh, chart and video I promised you I'll be doing on Friday in the video on Friday. Um, I can say this is the most important analysis video I'll do and now you'll see why because we go in the details of the, of, 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 of the cycle analysis. And this is something I don't do a weekly or monthly basis or something. This is just a cycle analysis video. So last time I did this when Bitcoin broke the all time high. Uh, and and I have it posted on my trading view. You can go check it. I'll leave a link in the in the in the description below. So uh, I did this last time was February 12, 2021, when Bitcoin broke the all-time high, and I studied all the, the the previous cycles to try to find what the top is and when the top will be in. And I had different scenarios. So the first the first target was sixty-two thousand dollars, and to be reached on April like mid and, and end of April. Second target was 95. So what did happen is Bitcoin reached the first target in April, which was around 65, 62, and then made a fake out to 65. And after that, it made, yes, a new all-time high on, in November. And here my target was 95, but this was just a, a, a double, double, um, double top. So, uh, so that's just to show that that studying previous cycles, studying the history of the chart does give you an indication. Um, very important thing, we don't trade out of this high macro time frame cycle study. This is just to give us a bias and kind of an idea when we can expect a high or a low in and, and what the low can be. So for this, what I do is I have my notes, I have my water, and I'm gonna try to make it as easy as possible and to explain it as simple as possible for you to, 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 to see. So what I'm doing here, first I have the BLX chart, which is the most, uh, the chart that have the most history. So since, since Genesis, since uh, 2010, I have it on log scale just to have it easier to, to view. And for now, I have it the weekly. I mean, my study is mainly made on the daily and the weekly, but just to show the weekly. So let's start here. By the end of the video, if you really appreciate the hard work we put on this and we're explaining this, I would appreciate if you can uh, just hit the like button and, and subscribe to our channel where we share uh, education, technical analysis, education, and we have the NFT podcast, and we have a lot of alphas in the, in the Crypto Sheikh. So um, let's start. So that's the chart. What do I have on this chart? So I have the halving. So this is, uh, if you're not familiar with that, the halving is when, when, uh, when the payment or the mining rewards of Bitcoin is cut in half. Every 2,000, 210,000 blocks or approximately every four years we have that event where the mining rewards for the miners of Bitcoin, the one who, who, who validate the network, uh, cut in half. And that will keep on cutting in half till it will be zero in 2,100 something. So that's the deflation part of, of, uh, of Bitcoin. So these are the cycles. I'm considering a cycle which is the, the, the four years halving cycle. We can argue that this here is a cycle, but I consider this all as one cycle. The white line here is the genesis, and then this is the first halving, the second, the third, and the expected new one is gonna be somewhere in March 2024, and then after that, the expected one is gonna be in 2028, somewhere also February, March 2020, or January 2028. So far, these are dot line because that's in the future and this one. So that's the first I have on the chart. Second thing I have is the all time high. So that's the all time high after the Genesis, which was in June 2011 at $31 Bitcoin. I wish <laughs> we can go back there. Then we have the other all time high, which is 2013, which is almost $1,200. We have the third all time high, which was December 2017. I was into, into um, Bitcoin around these dates. And it was almost $20,000. And the current last all time high, which is around 69. I have it in dots because for now, this is the all time high we have. So we have the helping, we have the all-time high, and then I have the cycle lows. So the cycle lows is the low that Bitcoin put 
after the all-time high. So we have the starting of the cycle, which is the halving, for example, then we have the all-time high, then we have the cycle low. So for this cycle, after the all-time high, I consider this is the cycle low. So it's not the entire cycle low, it's after the all-time high. So this is the low, this is the low, and then after the 20K, Bitcoin dropped in December 2018 down to 3,200 almost, and now we're looking at, so what we're trying to find out now is when and where is the next cycle low. So just not to, so what I'm trying to find is now where is this low? So I know that this low was here, this low was here, and where is this low? So where is the low and how low Bitcoin can go? That's what we're trying to look based on the history. So let's first divide it into two. So we're looking at two variables. We're looking at the time when we can expect a low and what price or percentage drop this low will come in. So let's start with the time. Here we take, here we take the time from the all-time high to the cycle low. So if you remember these cycle lows, so from all time high to cycle low, I kind of, this first cycle, I don't take it in my calculation as essential as the other cycle because here the price was like tens, hundreds of dollars and Bitcoin was so new. I take more the data from the last two cycles, three cycles, but anyway, so from the First all-time high to the cycle low was around 170, 61 days. Then the second one from the 1,200 to the 161 dollars was around 413 days. Then we have from in, in, in 2018 from the 20k high to the 3,200 low was around 364. So if we take that only and we look at these, kind of the average that the low will come in somewhere around 320 days. If you take the percentage from this drop to this drop and you do the same percentage, that would be around 321 days. So I, I have this box here. So anywhere between August, July, August up to October, 2022. So in the coming four, five months, four months, five months, the, the low can be in. Again, this is based on the, 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 the history and we don't have a lot of cycles, just like two main cycles. So I trust it, but I don't trade off this. But this is just what the data shows. It doesn't have to be. Maybe the 25 is now the low. But in general, this is what the data shows. So I think it will be somewhere between July, August up to October, maybe even up to November. So this whole area here is where we expect the time to be in. How we can double check this? So let's look at, so let's keep these. Let's look at the cycle low to the halving. So from this cycle low to the halving was around 378 days. But as I said, the first cycle is not as the second two cycles. These are the more important cycles because there's more investment, there's higher market cap. So the second cycle from the low to the halving is, was around 540 days, then 511 days. So if we take here from, let's say, September, October, November, it will be somewhere between 480 days to 550 days. So let's, let's look at this. So if it's, it will be somewhere but 480 days up to 560 days, which is, which is, which follows these. So 540 days, 511 days, and if, if the low comes in November, that will be around 490 days, which, which kind of makes sense with the previous cycle. So that's kind of the first test that, yes, this might be the low and it will give us a nice timing with the previous cycle. Then we look at from the halving to the all-time high. So from this halving to the all-time high was around 364 days. Then we have 525 days. Then we have from the last um, halving to the current all-time high, it was around 546. So if you see here, it was increasing, increasing, and the last two. So if I take the percentage from the next halving, which will be in March, to the next all-time high, expected all-time high, it will be around 580 days, and that will come 
around September 2025. If we looked at the all-time high, this one was November, this one was December, this one not November, December, November, and I, like December, November, it makes sense to be like kind of September following the previous, the previous um, all-time highs. I'm not gonna go through when the, the new all-time high and how high, that's something I will do in 2024. <laughs> or next year or, or the year after. For now, we're looking at the low, so, so that's it. So another thing to look at, very important, is from the all-time high to the halving. So it was 530 days, 952 days from that all-time high to the next halving. Here we had 880 days from all-time high to the halving, and if we look at this, and this is very important, if we look at the current all-time high, 69, to the halving, it's around 840-something days, which makes sense. So 952, 882, if we take the percentage drop, it will be somewhere around this. So that will make it, that, that makes sense. It makes sense that this is the high of the cycle, and we're heading toward the low of the cycle, and then, oh, sorry the law of the cycle, and then to the halving. So that's give, give me confidence that the timing here is kind of, it's, it makes sense with the entire history on the entire previous cycles. So that that's, will give us a, a time of somewhere between August and November of 2022, the law of the cycle will be in. For me personally, anywhere between end of summer to the, to the early next uh, Q4 will be a good time for, for the final bottom end. Now let's look about the, the price, w how low the price can go. As, as I mentioned earlier, when I was doing the study, I was looking at like how high the price can go, and 62 was the first target. Now I'm looking at like how low the price can go. So let's look at the price from all-time high to the cycle low. Here we have 93% drop. Here we have 86% drop. Here we have 84% drop. Another thing I like to look, up, look at is the Fibonacci, which I did here. I like to look at the Fibonacci. So let's see. As I said, the first cycle is not as essential for me to study, but Bitcoin dropped around 0.93, which is 93% on the Fibonacci. The other cycle, Bitcoin bottomed at 0.8624 from the top. To, to, and, and this Fibonacci, I'm taking it from the previous cycle low up to the all-time high. So if I take this Fibonacci, I have the 0 0.862 in this case. In this cycle, so if I take the Fibonacci from this cycle low to the all-time high, Bitcoin bottomed around 0 0.848, 0 0.85. So if I take an average, then this cycle should bottom somewhere between, if I take that from the low 3,200 3, up to the all-time high, this will be around 0.834. Why? Because I had, I had here 848 and here I had 862. So on average, this, if we keep the same, the same kind of, 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 of steep down, that will come around 0.834, which will come around $14,400. If I take the drop percentage, which is almost the same, 93%, 86%, 84%, if I take 82%, so if I go to the all-time high and drop 82%, that will come around 12300 So anywhere here is the expected bottom of uh, Bitcoin. And now is a very essential thing. I'm not saying this will happen. I'm not saying this will happen. I'm saying that's what the data shows. The data here showed 62 and showed 95. We reached 62. But this is from what the cycle shows us. Another important thing I want to mention is we have the previous all-time high. Bitcoin never dropped down to previous all-time high. You will hear this a lot. Yes. So here we have all-time high. Bitcoin never dropped to the previous all-time high. Here we have 20K and then Bitcoin dropped to 3,000, it didn't drop to the all-time high. So 
why now I'm, I'm, I'm saying the price can drop lower than the all-time high? Because the bounce up, it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same. So if we take the price from the cycle low to the all-time high, from this cycle low to the all-time high was 500 Eight, sorry, 58,000%, so 584x. This was 120x. The last cycle from the 3,200 up to the 69 was 20x. So it didn't do the 200, 120 to 100x. So that will make it possible if we have the drop of 80, 82%, that Bitcoin will go down lower than the all time high. Just to, 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 to repeat it again, usually Bitcoin don't drop to lower than the previous all-time high because you, if we look at the other cycles, the push up was always strong, 589x, 84x, 120x. This time it's only 20x, which is a big number, especially with the market cap of Bitcoin and the price. So the more, the bigger the market cap, the harder the harder to have more access. So if Bitcoin price is $100,000, you can't expect 200X. That will be a lot of market cap. You need a lot of liquidity to push the price that high. So what to conclude? Yes, Bitcoin never dropped to a, a lower than the previous all-time high, and this might be the case. And this is one important thing I will mention. It has nothing to do with the cycle, but let's take this. So that's the that's the all-time high. Everyone will be looking at this all-time high. I think Bitcoin either will come, not touch the all-time high and put a bottom somewhere between 21, 23, maybe that 25 is the actual bottom. I mean, this is, this is good. So I think it's either will front run that or will go through this. And if it go through this, it can reach my target, maybe we can lower and then go up. So both scenarios are possible. Um, many ask me what to do now. I'll tell you at the end what I am doing. So given the previous cycle, Bitcoin usually go down, as we said, we expect this time to go down 80 to 82 uh, percent. If Bitcoin goes down, let's say 70, 72 percent, it will put it at, at 20K. 80 percent, it will put it at, as we said, at the 14, 14 level. So I expect this is the low, not expect, based on the, the, the analysis, the low will come in between somewhere July, August up to October, and it will be somewhere between 12,400 up to 14, 15,000. I like this level here. I like this level. If everyone is looking at the all-time high, I like Bitcoin to go down to this support and bounce from this support. And that makes sense on the technical analysis with the price target that we got. So that's, that's it. I'll post this in trading view so you can go back and, and look at it and look at the analysis I made. And uh, one important thing is everyone asks me, is it a good time to buy Bitcoin? On a personal level, I don't like dollar cost averaging except in this case. So um, I had orders in but didn't hit on Binance. But for me personally, whenever Bitcoin get close to 23, I'll be buying, I'll be adding to my long-term analysis to my long-term holding up to as low as it can go. So every one, two thousand, three thousand dollar drop, I'll add a certain amount, same amount, same amount, same amount. So I can average my buy. You can do that, but you have to keep in mind. And this is why this analysis is important. You have to keep in mind that there is a big chance that Bitcoin will never see these numbers again until like two years, three years to come. If you're comfortable of holding Bitcoin for two, three years to have a new high, then go for it. If you can't afford putting this money on the side, then wait, don't. So don't invest what you can't, what you need. So you need to put money that you're thinking a couple of years from now. As we said, the new all-time high might come in September 2025. So if you're buying now, think that you have to hold this for two, two, two to three years to come. Um, that's kind of it. I know this video, not a lot of people will like it. Again, I'm not saying this will happen. All I'm showing is a history. All I'm showing is this is the chart. This is the previous cycles. This is what we expect based on the previous analysis. 
this might be the case, this might not be the case. And here from the fundamental point of view, Bitcoin started 2010 after the 2008 crisis. And since the 2008 crisis, everything is pumping up. The stock market, everything is pumping up. We didn't have in the world, we didn't have that big challenge on the economy side, which we're having now. I don't think how this macroeconomical situation can affect Bitcoin. Obviously, it's not affecting it positive as a hedge for inflation. I don't know what will happen. So this is there's a kind of a new macro, new macro condition um, uh, uh, happening now. If we look at, at the S&P. You will see since 2008 here, since 2008 drop, it's kind of going up. Yes, we have some corrections, but like 10, 15, 20 percent correction. This is a black swan, which is the virus drop. But in general, this has been inflated up, 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 up. So Bitcoin was started after this. So it started in a in a macroeconomical situation, which is pumping, 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 pumping. We don't know if this will be just a, a, a correction and continue up. That would be good for Bitcoin. And we expect the same cycle to happen. But let's say something big happened in the world financial and I don't know. And S&P crash bad. I don't even expect we don't know what Bitcoin will do. So let's put it this way for in the meantime. This is the this is the cycle analysis. These are the numbers we showed. Um, uh, I am I think this is a good this is the area where a bottom can be in, given the previous uh, cycle. If Bitcoin drop only 60%, then it will put it somewhere around 23, 25. Personally, on a personal level, you don't have to get in the bottom. On a personal note, I'll be adding in whenever I can. Whenever I have extra cash, I'll be adding in buying that dip. I didn't buy any of the dip here for my long term. I will start buying the dip at 25, which wasn't hit on Binance. So that's it. Um, as I said, if you appreciate this content, please like. It's the first time I ask for this because a lot of work went into this. So like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, follow us on Discord. There's a channel in, the, uh, in, in our community to ask me anything about technical analysis. Thank you.